Are you worried about the National Registry exam, the exam coming up, or maybe you've tried before and you felt lost? I'm Dan Limmer from Limmer Education. I can help you get rid of that lost feeling. The video you're about to watch is me dissecting and explaining a National Registry question. So many students have knowledge but are just surprised by the exam and don't do well. Others didn't really pay attention in class, didn't do well, and you need structured study. Regardless of the situation you're in, emtreview.com, paramedicreview.com has the resources that you need to succeed. I'll be live online every week, taking time to go through National Registry questions with you to teach you important things about EMS and get you ready for that test. Take a look at this question. See if you've read questions like this before. This may just be the key to having you pass that test. So you've had a second to read the question. Let's go over this. So the patient is 38 years old. Now always pay attention to the age of the patient in a question because you can't see them. The difference between eight and 38 and 68 uh, is significant when it comes to figuring out what's going on and what you should do. This patient complains of nausea and vomiting. They have a history of alcoholism. Their abdomen is distended and they have left upper quadrant tenderness on palpation. All right, so there's our patient picture. Now the vital signs, pulse is 112, respiratory rate is 18. And just looking at those, I look at both of those as being elevated. 112 is tachycardic. Now, granted, vomiting and discomfort can make your pulse go up. But with nausea and vomiting, this person probably isn't running laps around the house. So those are relatively elevated. Now, when I look at the blood pressure, I see 116 on 88, and they're setting at 95%. The question asks, you should. Now, if you look at this and say, okay, look at all that stuff. I'm going to go make my choice. There's a lot of things that you're missing here. This is what happens when you rush through national registry questions and also when you make assumptions or follow false rules. If I take this nausea and vomiting and the history of alcoholism and the distended belly with left upper quadrant tenderness, I'm thinking pancreatitis. That can be serious. And the belly is distended. That can be fluid. So I'm looking at that thinking, okay, this isn't just nausea and vomiting. I should look at this as a little bit more serious. I've already said, I believe that the pulse and the respirations are elevated, but the blood pressure is going to be something that many people miss. If I take 116 over 88 and I get the pulse pressure by subtracting the diastolic from the systolic, I'm going to get 28. And that's my pulse pressure. So you're thinking, okay, what are you getting at here, Limmer? Well, the pulse pressure should be at least 25% of the systolic blood pressure. So if I take 116, I'm going to divide that by four to get a quarter. I'm going to get two, eight, 36, nine times four is 36. I should have at least a pulse pressure of 29. But what do I have? I have 28. And don't say, oh, that's really close. It doesn't matter. When you take the pulse pressure, which is starting to narrow and combine it with a rapid pulse rate and a rapid respiratory rate, this gives me concern with abdominal pain and distension. So if you looked at that and said, well, the patient's nauseous and vomiting, you missed the point. And you're going to miss it when it comes to the answers as well. So let's go look at this. Allow him to take sips of water. Yeah, not so much. One, it's going to make him vomit more. Two, just in case this is a surgical kind of thing, let's keep stuff out of his belly. And despite what you may see on the street, determine if he can ambulate with assistance. Hey, buddy, can you get up and walk to the stretcher? Um, is not the right answer uh, on this question, or probably much of the time on the National Registry. Uh, our desire to have them walk versus carrying them is not appropriate here. Well, now we have administer oxygen or rebound tenderness. If this is where I talked about set rules, if you look at this oxygen saturation and you say 95%, I can't give oxygen, then you're going to get the question wrong. Because what will rebound tenderness do for you? What will it tell you? What will it do for the patient other than cause more pain? 
it's not going to change our care. So we're going to get rid of this. The correct answer, of course, is administer oxygen. And why are we administering oxygen? If you read and interpreted this question properly with this nausea and vomiting, with the alcoholism, with the potential for significant problems in their belly, which by the way is distended, that might be ascites and fluid. We have left upper quadrant tenderness, which we know can be an issue. The pulse is high, the respiratory rate is high, the pulse pressure is narrowed. This patient is sick. 95, it's not like we're saying it's 99 or 100. If we say, well, below 94, we can give oxygen. No. Why are we giving oxygen? Because this patient is sick and they are in shock or going into shock. Now they're compensating, which makes oxygen the best answer. I'd also like to add here for the people that say the National Registry is nothing like the street. You've got to learn something different. That's how they say it. Um, the fact is, is that patients aren't going to hand it to you on the street. And this isn't handed to you in the question. This requires the thinking that I would want you to have on the street. Now, if the National Registry put in here, the skin was cool and moist, it would hand to you the whole shock thing. So we put a borderline pulse pressure in there with a tachycardia and respirations. You know, that whole 12 to 20 is very relative. Can 18 be abnormal? I think so for a patient lying down and the saturation at 95. If the saturation was 93, then oxygen is the easy answer. What's the point of this question? To determine the patient is sick and to pick the best choice of the four given for this patient, that answer is administer oxygen. Don't look at that and say 95 and get rid of it. That shouldn't be your first thought. Interpret the question just like you'd evaluate a patient and make the best decision.